Genetic resources help fish adapt, adapt to change, and evolve. It's the reason that we have inshore and offshore stocks of herring, stocks of cod. It's the reason that salmon exist in so many different rivers and have so many different runs at different times of year. This diversity of seafood is in fact due to aquatic genetic resources. Genetic resources, um, or aquatic genetic resources, what they really are is the aquatic life around us. So it's the fish, it's the shrimp, uh, the frogs, the snails, the, the mussels, and in fact also aquatic insects and aquatic plants that are being used by people uh, for food and agriculture um, and for human consumption. Um, and so, um, Aquatic genetic resources, the adjective genetic implies that we are looking at these individuals and these populations uh, through a genetic lens, if you like. Uh, so that means gametes and genes and uh, sperm and ova and chromosomes. Um, in short, all the genetic material that is being um, used for breeding and for domestication of aquatic species. It is a major achievement in itself that the Commission had the foresight in the early 90s to uh, recognize the importance of sectors other than the plant sector and, in, and decided to uh, um, uh, go ahead and uh, ask FAO conference to broaden its mandate, which then happened in 1995. And this is really important because uh, there are organizations like uh, the CBD and other organizations that have the broader mandate to look into uh, the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity for food and agriculture. But it's really the commission that uh, directs the attention of the global community to uh, species uh, which are relevant specifically for food and agriculture and um, that is necessary. I think the Commission has an extremely important role to play in working with the technical departments within FAO and the natural resource and fisheries and aquaculture departments in the countries. And it's basically to help raise the profile of aquatic genetic resources. The policies, especially in fisheries, are extremely poorly developed. The Commission can really help with raising awareness and creating good science-based policies that will help decision makers and inform the public about the potential of aquatic genetic resources.